in the last stream, we were working on setting up this little system right here with the modular routers. And we also, at the very end of the last stream, set up this machine over here, the fluid extractor, to slowly but surely extract all of the latex out of oak logs. And since the end of last stream, our fluid extractor has continued doing its job to the point where we now have a full 1,000 millibuckets of latex. Not a crazy amount, uh, but unfortunately the maximum amount that the fluid extractor can hold. And so I think one of the first things that we should do at the start of today's stream is maybe grab another one of the quantum fluid tanks and put that down next to the fluid extractor so we have a place to store some of that excess fluid. Um, we will, at some point uh, in today's stream, look at getting the latex processing unit so we can actually start turning all of that latex into plastic. Uh, but given that that's not really a, a super high priority, uh, we could start at least by just storing that latex somewhere. So something like this, extract. This should work just fine and, and should continue to uh, extract all of the latex uh, from the remaining uh, eight logs there. If I'm not mistaken, I think we did put eight logs in at the end of the last stream. So it might be the case that you get um, 1,000 millibuckets of latex per oak log. Don't quote me on that, but that could be the case. Either way, while we let that do its thing, between streams, I have, of course, spent more time breeding the bees that we have here. Uh, so we now have three new cells for bees. We have the netherrack cell. These are generated from breeding the redstone bee with the cobblestone bee. We then have the pigmen bee, which we also have in the cell. I think we have three of these right now and maybe four of, uh, of the netherrack bees. Uh, and the pigmen bees are generated by, sift, uh, by breeding together the sieve bees and the dust bees. It took quite a while. Unfortunately, it's only a 10% chance of getting the pigman bee. And so uh, over in this crate right about here, we do have all of the other bees that I got whilst trying to get the pigman bee. Uh, so we do have quite a few of the Certus Quartz bees, the Fluorite bees, the Skeleton bees, and the Blaze bees. And the Blaze bees are one of the most important bees that we have because the plan for today is to hopefully fill this last cell here with Blaze bees. Now, to get the Blaze bees, we are going to have to get nine blaze rods because um, although we do have the blaze bees already if we want them to actually work we of course need them to pollinate and if they're going to pollinate they need a blaze mesh the blaze mesh of course made from nine blaze rods and so as i mentioned at the end of the last stream there are a couple of different ways that we can go about getting nine blaze rods um, one way is we could make the blazing doll each blazing doll uh, can be turned into one actual blaze that we could then fight and then hopefully get a blaze rod from that would take a little while and would be a bit costly because each blaze doll uh, does require four blaze powder. And as of right now, we have a whopping one blaze powder. So if we were going to do that, we'd probably have to sift quite a lot of dust. Although as luck would have it, our bees have been working and we do have a little bit of dust uh, if we wanted to go that way. Alternatively, what we could do is we could build a nether portal, head on through to the nether, try and find another fortress and then use that to find and kill blazes until we get enough blaze uh, rods to build the blaze mesh. Now, originally I wasn't going to do this, but I think we can actually achieve two things at once here because another problem that we have right now is that if you see under the minimap, our base is in an ocean biome. It's actually half in an ocean biome. And if we had one over here, the other half is in a deep ocean biome. The downside of being in an ocean biome is that regular mobs like cows, chickens, sheep, pigs don't spawn. They just don't spawn whatsoever in these biomes and so if we're going to try and get those to spawn we're going to have to build out into a new biome now i don't know how big the ocean biome that we are uh, that we're in is it could be just a few blocks it could be a few hundred blocks i have no idea but if we build a nether portal head through into the nether build outwards in the nether because every one block in the nether is eight blocks in the overworld we can very quickly hopefully move to a different biome, build a little grass platform, and hopefully get some mobs to spawn. Uh, the reason we're looking for those passive mobs, by the way, is for things like leather. Leather is something we're going to need if we're going to make uh, things like the metal press, which I've mentioned a few times uh, in the past, that being this guy right here. And one thing that I was reminded of between streams is that we also have jetpacks. Now, the jetpacks are going to make our life a lot easier. They're going to make it a lot less likely that I fall and die in the void, which we have done a couple of times now. But in order to make the jetpacks, we need a leather strap, which requires some leather. You can make leather from rotten flesh, but you need quite a bit of rotten flesh. And given that it's quite difficult to spawn mobs and that we don't currently have any zombie bees actually producing honeycombs, we don't have the amount of rotten flesh required to make the leather to make the leather strap for the jetpacks or to make the leather for 
the metal press either. So, long story short, I think we should make a nether portal. I think we should look to see if we can't find a nether fortress. And at the same time, um, I think we should try and find a new biome to where we can actually spawn some mobs for uh, for things like leather, as well as wool, and uh, maybe just some food as well. You know, we can get some chicken eggs, we can get some, uh, some pork chops, all that good stuff. So essentially what I'm thinking here, chat, is that uh, much like we did previously, we can do a similar thing um, with the... Uh, 1065 buckets of lava that we have in this quantum tank here and uh, if we just extract directly into a stone barrel like so uh, we are going to need a couple of blocks to actually make this work but what we should be able to do is uh place some cobblestone above the barrel like this uh, once again fill that center spot there with water and then when we set this to extract we should start producing obsidian which we can then pull out of the bottom of the barrel uh, using this hopper so extract and hopefully, look at that, obsidian is being generated. And uh, if we just wait till we have about 14, we can go ahead and build a, a regular nether portal. So boom, and let's head on through. Presumably, we're going to just spawn in an empty void. If we're lucky, we might spawn within viewing distance of a nether fortress, although that would be incredibly fortunate if we did. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like we have. That is completely fine. Oh no, we totally have, look at that. So that is pretty nice. I think what we should do in that case then is we should head back. We should probably get some form of armor given that uh, right now we have no armor and therefore would probably die quite quickly uh, to some of these blazes here. And we should also get some cobblestone or something so we can actually build out over towards that fortress. And we do, of course, want to make sure that we have enough obsidian so that we can build another portal a little further away to try and find an area that is in a different biome in the overworld. Armor-wise, we currently have 13 diamonds and 13 emeralds. Uh, Chat has, once again, of course, pointed out that uh, emerald tools and armor are pretty good. So I think an emerald chest plate is probably not a bad idea here. And um, we then do have what it takes if we want to make like an emerald helmet, which does mean I have to take my own head off, but that's fine. And then we'll probably just go with something like diamond leggings and diamond boots. So we can always do a bit more sifting um, or get the bees required if we want to get more emeralds and diamonds in the future. I think this is probably fine. Um, and then now we have a good amount of obsidian. If we just take some cobblestone here, we should be able to head on through to the nether, fight a bunch of blazes, hopefully get the nine blaze rods required to get blaze bees. Uh, and also the creepers, man. <laughs> Where the heck did you come from? Where I even put a torch at the top of the of the portal. And yet still, he spawned in. Let me do a quick check up here. Is this Yeah no, there's no there's no X's up here, so I don't think they can spawn up here. I have no idea where that creeper spawned in. Maybe on top of the the drawers, potentially. Chat has recommended that we should get a shield here if we're gonna fight blazes, which is a good suggestion. We do have other shields from other mods like Mechanism. I think the uh, the main advantage is they just last longer. Given that we do have 1,925 steel, I think I'm fairly happy to uh, potentially waste a bit of steel making a, uh, a steel shield here. Okay, so luckily we have found a blaze spawner fairly close by. And so we're actually only one blaze rod away here from being able to uh, to actually make the blaze mesh. There we go. Chat, we've done it. We have nine blaze rods. I'm still not quite sure what that's about. <laughs> For whatever reason in this pack, if you're on fire and you get in the water, the, the the fire and sizzle sound keeps going until you get out of the water. It's very weird. But either way, boom. And boom, we have a blaze mesh. And so what we should be able to do now is over here, we should be able to place the blaze mesh into the ground in this little pod. And uh, we are going to have to get another dispenser. The wireless redstone receiver is already down. Uh, between streams, I did go ahead and get another set of GPS cards and I set up um, all of the remaining uh, wireless redstone receivers that we had. I also moved uh, the little wireless redstone setup around to the back of the blast brick here just to kind of hide it out of the way. It's not really something that needs to be visible all of the time. So let's quickly grab a new hive here and let's get our bees set up, shall we? So once again, dispenser into tier one beehive for now. We can always upgrade this 
in the future. And then now, finally, we can bring in all of the uh, the baby blaze bees that we have in here. We've got one, two, three, four, five of them. This cell, thankfully, does have regular uh, regular glass all the way around. And so hopefully, none of these baby blaze bees here are going to die straight away. And even more importantly than that, we should start to slowly but surely now generate blaze combs, which, of course, as with all the rest of our combs, are going to be processed in the centrifuge, generating us some blaze powder, which we can shoot on over to our drawers. Now, right now, uh, because we have the pigmen bees generating glowstone and we don't have a draw for glowstone, we are running into a little bit of an issue with everything getting backed up. But thankfully, that's going to be fairly easy to fix. Let's go ahead and make another storage draw here. In fact, I think we should go ahead and make two storage draws, uh, one for the glowstone and then one for the upcoming blaze rods. And for now, I guess maybe we'll put it like here and here. Now, before we go and try and find a new biome, one thing I did mention in the last stream was potentially hooking up our storage drawers to the crafting station. I did test that uh, between streams, and unfortunately, it doesn't work. You can't run trim under the ground to connect the crafting station to the draw controller. Um, also, even if you put the draw controller directly next to the crafting station, you still can't access anything that's in the drawers around it. Um, it also doesn't work if you just put a crafting station next to a storage drawer. That doesn't work either, unfortunately. Um, so right now, I think crates are the best way for us to go forward with this. Also, um, one thing that people have been reminding me about uh, continuously is the fact that we should get a draw key to lock all of our drawers. So uh, let me quickly get a little bit of gold smelting up here. And also, let's quickly eat a golden apple as well, because we're a little low on hunger. But uh, the draw key is a pretty nifty item that's fairly easy to make. It's two gold, one gold nugget, and one upgrade template. And once you have this, you can lock your storage drawers so that they are still locked to that one type of item, even if you run out of that type of item. So right now, for example, we have 26 glowstone in this oak drawer. At the moment, if I take all of the glowstone out, something else could make its way into that drawer. If you lock the drawer, even if you take all 27 out, the drawer will still be locked to glowstone, so only glowstone can go back into that drawer. Uh, it's not a huge deal right now because we don't have uh, too much stuff being pumped in here, uh, but for example, uh, this could become a problem when we reach like the maximum amount of honeycomb. Right now, we don't have a void upgrade, so if we did reach 65,000 honeycomb and then we took out all the glowstone, it's quite possible that honeycomb could make its way into this drawer and then the whole system would still get backed up because there would then be nowhere for the glowstone to go. Uh, you, while you can lock drawers individually with this, you can also just right-click on the draw controller, uh, and that will lock all of the drawers connected to that draw controller there. Uh, so now all of this stuff is locked to the one specific item. So now, chat, let's take our obsidian, and let's go see if we can't find the new biome, shall we? Lukewarm ocean. <laughs> <laughs> what? How many ocean biomes are there? So we did find the new biome. However, it was a lukewarm ocean biome, which I believe is still an ocean biome. And uh, Twitch chat has recommended that I build a building gadget here as opposed to uh, just trying to manually place down all of the cobblestone to build bridges because it is incredibly slow. So uh, thankfully, the building gadget is fairly easy to make. And we can also charge it nice and easily directly inside of our thermo generator. So if we just place the building gadget in the bottom left slot here, uh, that is going to slowly but surely fill up with energy. Uh, we can then take the building gadget through to the nether, and this should make building uh, long bridges of cobblestone to get to you know a place where we can put down a new nether portal much, much easier. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, we can hold down the uh, building gadget menu key, which I did have to change uh, in my control settings. If you type in uh, gadget and then click category, uh, you're looking for the settings menu. By default, it's set to G, uh, but G is also bound to other things. So for me, at least it didn't work by default. But uh, once you've remapped it, uh, we then want to select one of these options here. And I think we want to build just a horizontal column with the maximum amount of range. And if we shift right click on cobblestone, that should set cobblestone as the default option. And so at that point, we can do something like this to build out a path. I'm actually not sure if we can like build it on a pre-existing path. I think it's possible we could. But if we do have to build it kind of like staggered upwards, that's also completely fine. So we're really hoping for not an ocean biome. Thank you. 
it's a deep, <laughs> it's a deep lukewarm ocean biome. <laughs> oh, we've gone from ocean biome to deep ocean biome to lukewarm ocean biome to deep lukewarm ocean biome. Why? Chat, we've done it. We've done it. <laughs> we've cracked it. We have a non, a non ocean biome. We've done it. So now that we've actually found a biome that is not an ocean biome, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab a bunch of dirt to build a big old dirt platform. And then I think we should also grab some kind of seed, uh, specifically of the grass variety. And what we should be able to do is we should be able to set up a big grass platform here uh, that will hopefully begin spawning passive mobs like cows sheep chicken pigs etc and again using the building gadget here we can in fact make this dirt platform very quickly this is gonna take a while uh, to spread but that is completely fine so we do now have 20 blaze rods our blaze bees have been uh, busy at work getting us the, the blaze combs, which of course are being processed, producing blaze rods. And so uh, what we can do now is we can of course lock uh, that drawer because otherwise something like this happens and the drawer ends up getting filled up with steel, which is not what we want. And uh, we can of course rectify that by locking this drawer, but also by upgrading the steel drawer uh, because right now it is at the maximum there. Uh, between streams, I did also upgrade the beeswax drawer. I gave that a storage upgrade. Um, I also think I gave another drawer. Yeah, the coal drawer also got a storage upgrade uh, because both of those drawers surpassed 2048 items so we had to upgrade them to give them more space unfortunately we are now out of emerald so we can't make an emerald upgrade nor can we make a diamond upgrade so we're probably going to have to go with a gold upgrade for the time being to uh, to keep steel uh, going into that steel drawer there but uh, either way now that we have 20 blaze rods we can do a couple of things one of the things we can do is we can make another blaze mesh for our blaze bees because i think in general uh, the more pollination blocks they have the more efficient they can work like right now this guy and the guy next to him are not really doing anything because i think only so many bees can actually use like one pollination block at any given time which is why most of the bees have at least a couple of their pollination blocks around and where possible i try to fill the floor um, with pollination blocks like i've done uh, with the redstone and the steel however one of the next things i want to do as i mentioned earlier in the stream is i would like to get a jetpack to get a jetpack we need a leather strap. We have to first start by making a tier zero jetpack, which is the wooden jetpack, which I don't believe is a, a particularly good jetpack, but it is required if we're going to upgrade to a tier one jetpack, a tier two jetpack, a tier three jetpack, or even potentially a tier four or five jetpack with the emerald jetpack being the highest tier of jetpack you can make. But to make the wooden jetpack, back at the start here, we need four wood, one wooden capacitor, which is more wood and an energy cell, the energy cell made with even more wood, redstone, and a basic cell, which is made with iron, redstone and sticks we also need two wooden thrusters again more of the same stuff more wood more energy cells more basic coils and a furnace the hard part for us is going to be the leather strap the leather strap requires two iron nuggets and three leather and as of right now we do not have any leather however now that we have access to blaze rods what we can make is this block right here the alchemy catalyst from britannia with the alchemy catalyst you can put rotten flesh into a mana pool with a tiny amount of mana, much like we've been doing with the coal to get dielectric paste, but with this recipe, we can get leather. Now, in order for this recipe to work, you do have to have an alchemy catalyst underneath the mana pool. Um, if I were to take some of our rotten flesh that we have already, and I was to just try and throw that into the mana pool, it wouldn't work. You do have to specifically have uh, the catalyst beneath it for that recipe to work. And thankfully, now that we have access to a blaze rods, uh, we should be able to get that recipe going fairly easily because the only thing really stopping us up until now was the brewing stands we needed two we, we needed two brewing stands and each brewing stand of course requires one blaze rod now that we have access to essentially infinite blaze rods this should be very doable uh, other than the brewing stands we also need four living rock two gold and one mana pearl um, we should still have i believe one ender pearl left from the last stream where we killed a few endermen i hope we do indeed good stuff and it's possible that we already have some living rock. We do, however, not quite enough. So we should also uh, grab a little bit of stone as well and get that down around our pure daisy. But once we have that, getting the uh, alchemy catalyst really shouldn't be too difficult for us. And it also comes with the added benefit 
of making ender pearls much easier to get as well. Because if we look at the alchemy catalyst here, you can see that uh, one of the recipes in this page is turning gas tears into ender pearls. And given that we can get gas tears by sifting soul sand, and we could of course get soul sand from sand and witch water, both of which at this point are essentially free for us to make, we can fairly reliably get ender pearls this way, which is going to be especially useful once we get into ender bees, because in order for an ender bee to work, uh, we have to have a block of ender iron, I think it is. Yeah, this ender iron block down here, uh, which is made from nine ender iron ingots, each of which are made from one ender pearl and one iron. Uh, of course, once we get the ender bee, we can then make infinite ender pearls, much like we're doing right now with blaze rods. But in order to get that ender bee going, much like with the blaze rods, we're going to have to get nine ender pearls first. And I think doing it with Britannia is going to make life a little bit easier there. And Twitch chat does point out actually that we do also have access to ghast bees uh, that we could get if we wanted to. We make these with sieve bees and soul sand bees. Uh, soul sand bees were actually pretty close to getting now that we have netherrack bees and sand bees. So we could look at getting a soul sand bee. Uh, this is our 100% chance, you're guaranteed the soul sand bee. And then from there, we could use that uh, to again have a 100% chance to get a ghast bee, which is then going to produce the ghast honeycombs that we can then send a fuse down into ghast tears and with 100% certainty, turn into ender pearls using the alchemy catalyst. So that is kind of the plan here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that uh, living rock, which is going to be hiding out over in here. Boom, boom. And we have ourselves an alchemy catalyst. So all we should have to do now is place this down under the mana pool, drop in the four rotten flesh. Uh, I guess only three rotten flesh is needed, actually. So we'll stick to three. Uh, we can always save the other one for later, just in case we need it. But uh, if we take three rotten flesh, drop those in, we get three leather. And then now, if we head back to our crafting station, we should be able, I think, to make that wooden jetpack. It is going to require quite a bit of wood. Thankfully, we did set up this hopping botany pot in the last stream. So getting a bunch of uh, wood here, not going to be a problem. Uh, we're also going to need a little bit of redstone, but we have over a thousand now, which is grand. And we also need a bit of iron. Again, almost a thousand there. So really shouldn't be too difficult. And we just basically have to go through this whole crafting tree. But I, I'm pretty sure we have everything for the jetpack. I'll make a couple of these coils. We'll make like 10. Because ideally, we're not going to stick with the wooden jetpack. I think I will use the wooden jetpack just to see how bad it is. But then uh, I think we'll almost instantly upgrade to the cobblestone jetpack. And then from now, I also think we'll probably go kind of directly into the iron jetpack. And then we'll maybe look at getting a steel jetpack as well, because we do have a tremendous amount of steel available to us right now. So getting the steel jetpack, which is a tier three jetpack, might not be too bad. And then, of course, once we get uh, some emerald bees and some diamond bees, we could even look at going uh, directly up to, uh, to tier five in, uh, in really not that uh, long a period of time. So there's our second thruster, and there's our first jetpack. All right, let's go charge this guy up in the thermo generator, and let's see just how good or bad this jetpack is right away the fact that it can only hold 20,000 redstone flux uh, even compared to the building gadgets 500,000 uh, doesn't bode particularly well um, by default I believe G is the default key to uh, enable the engine oh no G turns on hover mode I think V turns the engine on it does yeah so by default it's actually not too bad you can see the power on the left there we're 18,000 it does go down quite quickly not tremendously quickly but quite quickly. One thing I do like about it right out of the gate is we do move faster horizontally. So getting from the crafting table over to the B area is much faster with the wooden jetpack here. It's actually not as bad as I thought. I think the area where it's going to perform the worst is definitely when we turn hover mode on, which is when you press G, uh, because hover mode is supposed to keep you in the air a little bit. But this one, whilst it does slow you down, it doesn't really do a very good job at hovering. You do fall still quite quickly to the ground. And so I think we should definitely look at upgrading this to the cobblestone tier. Okay, so basically the same crafting recipe later, but this time with stone, and we have a stone jetpack. Uh, this does quadruple, or sorry, quintuple, the amount of uh, power the jetpack can hold up to 100,000 redstone flux, or from 20,000 in the, uh, the wooden jetpack. And hopefully it's also going to be a bit better at hovering and maybe even also move a little faster horizontally as well. Oh, you can press shift over the jetpack and it does tell you um, how good it is. So the wooden jetpack uses 32 FE per tick. Uh, the stone jetpack does uh, more than double that up to 70 FE per tick. So it does use twice as much power there. Uh, but you'll see that, uh, for example, the horizontal speed on the wooden jetpack is 0.06, whereas it's 0.08 
on uh, on the stone jetpack. So a one third increase in horizontal speed, and uh, the hover speed is 0.1 on the stone jetpack and 0.14 on the wooden jetpack so the wooden jetpack is higher because you fall faster uh, you want that number to be as low as possible uh, let's go ahead and grab this and uh, let's give that a try you gotta make sure you turn the jetpack on before you jump into the void chat otherwise that will end badly for you 100 percent of the time one of the ways i think the uh, the newer jetpacks also do um improve is the vertical speed you'll see it does take us a little while to kind of move upwards like when i just fell there it takes a little while to to, to get up so much like with the previous jetpack, it is quite fast at going across the base here. Not crazy fast, but pretty fast. And then hover-wise, if we press G, it's still not great, but it definitely is slower than the wooden jetpack. Either way, we know we're not going to keep it. Let's go and uh, see if we can't upgrade straight away to the iron jetpack. So the iron jetpack does require advanced coils here, which is not a huge deal. We are going to have to get quite a bit of gold for that, but we do have over a stack of gold ore ready to be smelted. It's just a case of crafting it with our ore crushing hammer. And our ore crushing hammer is going to break here, I think. Yeah, most certainly. Um, but uh, I think that 100 gold is probably going to be enough. One thing that I did forget about that, that is new to Minecraft, or at least new to me, uh, because I have jumped from 1.12 uh, uh, up to 1.16, uh, is the blast furnace, which does smelt uh, things like gold grit here, um, I believe twice as fast as a regular furnace. So we should definitely be using uh, a blast furnace like this for smelting things like gold. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it works with certain other items like food you can't smelt in here, although I'm fairly certain that you can smelt food uh, if you wanted to in a smoker. Yeah, that's one of the, the other new items that's been added since the last version of Minecraft I was playing. But uh, yeah, we should definitely be using this blast furnace where possible. Um, either way, we do have more than uh, 44 gold ingots now, and so we should be able to make this iron jetpack, I think. I did accidentally make too many iron energy cells there, but boom, we have an iron jetpack. Um, I feel like we might as well go straight in with the steel jetpack here. Again, we have 2,000 steel ready to go, and uh, we should be able to get even more gold here for all the uh, the extra advanced coils we're going to need. And there we go. We have the steel jetpack. So I think this is kind of the highest tier jetpack we can make. It's a tier 3 jetpack. Uh, diamond is tier 4, and then emerald is tier 5. As soon as we get the emerald and diamond bees, I think we can jump to tier five uh, really easily. And that's probably something we'll do uh, in within the next few streams. Uh, but you'll see now, this thing can hold 12 million redstone flux as opposed to the 20,000 uh, that we started with on the wooden jetpack. And uh, the power usage does go up to compensate that. It's up to 350 FE per tick. Uh, so more than 10 times the amount that the wooden jetpack used. Um, but it should also be a lot quicker. It should hover a lot more efficiently. You'll see the hover speed there, 0.025 uh, versus 0.16, so significantly better at, at hovering. Uh, however, we uh, might have to use all of the power of our thermal generator to not even fill this thing. Like, we can only hold 900,000 in here, and this guy can hold 12 million. So I think for now, uh, we're going to have to use it not full on power, but uh, hopefully, actually, now that we have access to essentially infinite blaze rods what we can of course do and what i have been talking about doing uh, for quite some time now is getting this guy right the block of blazing crystal which we can use to increase look at that 50 blaze rods uh, we can use that to increase the output of our thermo generator so if we're going to do that we need nine blazing crystals each blazing crystal uh, i was going to say requires four blaze powder but i'm a fool you can actually do it uh, with blaze rods so let me put these uh blaze powder away let's head on down to our uh, energizing orb and uh, the added benefit of the blaze rod recipe is that it works with our pre-existing redstone setup. So we can, in fact, just put nine blaze rods directly into this item hopper. And much like with the steel blocks before them, these are going to slowly but surely transform into blazing crystals that we can then craft up into the block of blazing crystal and then use that uh, as opposed to lava underneath our thermal generator to increase the power output that we're getting. So 1.7 million FE seems like a good place to start while we wait for this uh, to finish charging those up. Unfortunately, one downside of the jetpack is you can't wear a chest plate at the same time. And from what I can tell here, there's no option for plated armor. Uh, sometimes the jetpack mod will add the ability to kind of like craft armor with a jetpack and use them both at the same time. Um, I don't know if that's the case here. It would be uh, nice. But yeah, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be the case. It does add a little bit of armor. Three as opposed to the 14 from our emerald chest plate, uh, which is less than ideal. Uh, but at the same time, let's go ahead and uh, give it a go, shall we? So you'll see this time around, the uh, the speed at which we go upwards, like vertically, is significantly faster 
than that previous stone jetpack. And now, whenever we want to move from this side of the base over to this side of the base, it's actually quite fast. The only downside is that uh, there's kind of almost too much vertical speed. Like, we don't really want to go this high up, but it does make it a lot faster for us to get from one side of the base to the other. The only downside is making sure that I kind of slow down enough before I land so that we don't actually uh, take fall damage. And then in terms of hovering, you can see that does a significantly better job at hovering here. It takes so much longer to actually fall, which is really nice. The Twitch chat has pointed out that you can use uh, the comma key to lower your throttles. You'll see at the bottom there, the throttle is going down uh, from 100 down to 20 in increments of 20. And that really lowers the speed at which the, uh, the jetpack will kind of go up and down, depending on what number you set it to. Obviously, we set it to 100. It's going to move at that kind of stop normal max speed. Um, one thing we can do here, though, is if we don't want to, uh, you know, try and do this, where we go really high and then try and land, uh, we can turn hover mode on, kind of just rise up ever so slightly, and then still utilize, oh, that's so fast, still utilize the horizontal speed of the jetpack uh, without having to worry about the vertical speed either, which I really like. This is going to make it so much easier for us to get from one side of the base to the next, which is really the main reason why I wanted the jetpack. Right now, we don't have too much verticality uh, in the base. Uh, of course, the jetpack is also going to uh, help me whenever I fall into the void. I'm no longer going to die. Uh, but mainly, it's just the uh, the added speed that we get from being able to uh, to move around the base like this. So the Blazing Crystal is done down here. Uh, let's do a quick slash home. Uh, we should be able to craft this up into a block, a Blazing Crystal block. And then from there, chat, if we head on down here, I should keep uh, hover mode on. What we should be able to do is replace the lava under here. I'm not too worried about keeping the lava. We do have over a thousand buckets of it over there. So getting rid of it is uh, perfectly fine. And that's going to increase the power output of our thermal generator. Previously, uh, we were generating 400 FE per tick. Now we are generating 1,120 FE per tick or EF per tick with the same thermal generator just by changing uh, the block underneath it. And that's because uh, the temperature here is 2,800 Celsius for the thermal generator, um, as opposed to the lava, which had uh, 1,000. So it's 2.8 times more redstone flux just by changing uh, that block underneath, which is really nice. And the final thing, chat, that I want to work on, of course, is the thing that I talked about at the very start of the stream. And that is, of course, the latex processing unit. So in here, we now have 5,406 millibuckets of latex. Uh, if we look at the recipe for the latex processing unit. Also, we should have ticked this quest before, but that's fine. Uh, the latex processing unit, also, if we quickly pick up the fluid extractor here, I think we will complete the quest. Yeah, we did perfect. Uh, let's put that back down here. But uh, the latex processing unit is made with another pity machine frame, which should be fairly easy for us to do, four iron, one block of redstone, one furnace, one water bucket, and then one bucket of latex, uh, which again, really shouldn't be a huge deal. We do have uh, five and a half buckets worth uh, in that tank there. So let's quickly grab one of our buckets. Right now we've got two, but they're both full. Uh, we can, however, dump the water in here, grab the latex out of here. And then if we quickly get all the items required for the pity machine frame, we should be pretty much good to go here. So I'm pretty sure that one, two, three, four wood, one, two, three, four iron, and one block of redstone is what we need. It is. Um, I do once again have to move the mana spreader here, uh, and we should really look at getting an X. But for now, if we do this, that's going to start doing its thing. Uh, we do have our one of the forest, and we do have a living rock. So as soon as that's done, we are going to be good to go on that front. Uh, let's also go ahead and bookmark the recipe here for that uh, latex processing unit. So once again, living rock, right click, beautiful, boom, and boom, we have a latex processing unit. Nice. So now, down here, chat, if we place the latex processing unit, um, I think really just in place of the quantum tank. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this retains its inventory when I pick it up. So if we put the latex processing unit here, um, for now, we will obviously extract from uh, the quantum tank over into the latex processing unit. Uh, because that is the thing we need to do. Um, also, actually, I guess hmm, things are going to be a little janky here. The latex processing unit also needs water. So it kind of makes sense for it to be here where it can get water. But at that point, it also makes sense for us to maybe move the, uh, the fluid extractor 
if we did something maybe like... Hmm. I'm also thinking that it might be possible to auto-eject the latex. Yeah, so inside, I completely forgot about this, but inside the uh, the fluid extractor, um, if you click this little button here, uh, it's kind of hard to tell with the fluid extractor because it only has one output. But over here, you'll see that there are three squares. Uh, there's one for the latex, there's one for the water, and there's one for the output. In here, there's just one for the latex. If you click on that, um, it then comes up with all of the sides of the machine. So you have uh, front, back, top, left, right, and bottom. If we set the back here to push, that should automatically push all of the latex out of the back of the fluid extractor and into the latex processing unit. So all we have to do at that point is move our block placer to here, fill it back up with logs, make sure that's set to uh, always on. And at that point, we should see latex being produced and automatically being placed into the latex processing unit. Chat is pointing out that you could also do this with the sink as well. You don't need this uh, fluid cable. Uh, so you could have the uh, latex processing unit directly next to the sink. And then you could just set uh, the right hand side here to pull as opposed to push or enable. Okay, so I also had to set this side to pull. I really thought you could just have this side push and this side uh, be set to enable. But uh, I did have to set the left side of the latex processing unit to pull and the back side of the fluid extractor to push. Uh, but that does seem to be working. And as you'll see, uh, we do have latex in here. Um, and so what should happen I think when we reach 100 millibuckets of latex um, is we should start generating uh, tiny piles of dry rubber, uh, that being these guys right here. Uh, what we can do with those is we can craft them up into regular dry rubber, and then we can smelt that into plastic for use later on down the line in all of the other machines from industrial foregoing. We might not use those for a little while, but as you can see, it does take quite a long time uh, for this to actually get going. Uh, people in the YouTube comments did point out uh, that we do have access to speed upgrades. So we do have things like the speed tier one and speed tier two add-ons that we can make. However, unfortunately, we do require the dissolution chamber in order to be able to make those. And we also need uh, the metal press to make the gears as well. So we are a little ways away from being able to speed this up. So for the time being, uh, we are going to have to kind of deal with the slow production of latex, but that's kind of the whole point. I'm going to leave this running uh, in the future when we come back and when we want to actually start making machines from industrial foregoing. Hopefully we'll have a decent amount of rubber ready to go and we can just craft it up, smelt it down and, uh, and be good to go. And we should also make use of this uh, quantum tank though. If we put that here and we set the top to pull, that's going to start pulling all that latex from the top there and slowly but surely producing the tiny dry rubber. So I think that's going to do it for today, chat. Next time we will come back. Hopefully we'll have more bees. Between streams, I'm probably going to make the bee complex here just a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it uh, two cells deeper. Uh, I'll have to move the Batania setup, but I think that's fine. We'll make this deeper. Uh, I'll do some more bee breeding between streams. I'm hoping to get things like the diamond bee, the emerald bee. We'll probably get the lapis bee as a, a byproduct of those two as well. Uh, there are also a bunch of other bees. The ghast bee, I think, is going to be useful for getting the enderpearl bee. Um, I do think enderpearls are one of the next kind of big bees that we want to try and get. Uh, which could be a little tricky, but uh, we'll try and get that as well. Uh, that's going to require things like the soul sand bee, but uh, all of that is just more of the same kind of breeding that we've done up until now. Of course, that's also going to require me to uh, expand out the storage raw setup, but that should be perfectly fine. Uh, but I think, chat, next time we might start looking at astral sorcery here, uh, because as I mentioned previously, uh, if we're going to move forward into blood magic, uh, refined storage and mechanism, which are kind of the mods I want to get started with, especially uh, refined storage, uh, we do first have to start with astral sorcery here. Uh, so next time we might come back, we might look at getting a, a standard crafting altar, and then from there looking at getting into the beginnings of blood magic. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.